All right, what is up my homies and welcome today to Grey Gaming. In a recent community poll, we asked you which of the more challenging settlements from our tier ranking list did you want to see the most and you voted quite decisively in favor of seeing Bunker Hill. Many players don't even realize that Bunker Hill is a unlockable settlement which you can construct at and so this is one of those settlements that I was actually looking quite forward to building. Bunker Hill is a settlement that can be quite difficult to work with as the vast majority of structures in the settlement are unscrappable, including a large number of wood shacks that make up the defensive wall. For people who do not like this scrappy aesthetic, this can be a difficult thing to work around, but I did my best to try and see what we could actually accomplish here. And so without any further ado, let's go ahead and see what I was able to do with Bunker Hill. All right, stepping up the main entrance to Bunker Hill, we do have these large gates. Most of these are going to be unscrappable, so I'm not really going to draw much attention to things that aren't scrappable or weren't placed here. So the first thing you'll see when you enter is a rather large number of turrets built around the main obelisk. And so these platforms are pretty difficult to get lined up just right. I do have a bit of a floating one here but I kind of was running out of time, so I decided to just go ahead and let it float as it is. Right here, we do have a pair of showers, which I really do not like the scrappy aesthetic for these because, yeah, there's no privacy in these things. Let's just say it like it is. However, these are decontamination arches by design, so anyone who uses them will get their rads taken care of. And the ability to take a shower is a bit of a luxury for anyone who is running caravans. So we'll go ahead and pay attention to the central building last. So we'll just kind of continue to go around the settlement. So I had had a large number of exercise pieces of equipment just kind of stashed around in all of the different sheds and shacks. And so I kind of moved them all to a central location. So we do still have that central gym type area that I like to construct but a lot of it is just kind of out in the open, so um, not as nice and organized as I like. But then again, this whole settlement is not as organized as I would like. All right, so this is just one of the shacks that is still left here. I pretty much scrapped everything that was inside them, so there's not a lot of junk laying around. We do have a bed, some plants, a poster or a painting but not a lot else going on in here and most of these smaller shacks have been completely emptied so they're not really in use anymore we do have this large shack which i did construct to kind of not break that scrappy aesthetic and so we do have kind of this main bunkhouse this is the main place where people are going to go to sleep and there are quite a bit of gaps just because the shack structure in general is a giant gap. So it is a two-story bunkhouse. We do have several bunks. I believe this is enough housing for 10 people, which is about the number of people that we have attracted to this settlement. All of the uh, main settlers, you really do not want to reassign to anything. You want to leave them exactly as they are because the store counters that they man do not actually register as stores. So I made that mistake and ended up having to do a fairly large amount of work with console commands in order to correct that, where I assumed I could build stores and turn them into tier three settlers, because even though this is an in-game example of people who um, are kind of the trading hub, the trading center of the entire commonwealth in-game, they actually don't offer that nice of materials to the general public. So I thought I could upgrade them and it just really didn't work out well. So I ended up having to go with console commands to put them back where they belonged. Um, so we do have this little shed shack thing and it just has a couple pillories. So this is kind of the place where you send people who have been very naughty. We do not have a full on prison complex like we have at some of our other settlements but we do have some pillories just to make examples. This is kind of a stop and go or type of hub. So long-term incarceration probably isn't in the settlement's best interest because of the number of people passing through. So a short-term, short stint in a pillory is probably good enough for what the settlement needs. Now, this is our water farm. So we do produce enough water for 30 settlers, which is 
more than what we currently have, but not by that much. When you consider the number of settlers who are here by default um, and the number that I attracted here. So it is a pretty decent amount of water, but nothing like a major water farm is going to be. So over here we have Savaldi's flop house. So anyone who has spoken to our good friend Tony Savaldi right here probably knows the inside joke here of calling it a flop house. Uh, good old Joe Savaldi does not like that, but I decided to go ahead and continue that inside joke by putting flop house in big old neon lights. We didn't do a whole lot here. Again, for the vast majority of these, decorating these I found was quite a challenge and I really didn't know how to go about it. So really I just cleaned up the junk as best I could, threw in some potted plants, threw in a poster here and there. I did use console commands to get rid of their sleeping bags on the floor and replace them with some nicer Vault 88 beds. And other than that, I mean, we're pretty much the same. I threw in a couple extra um, Drumlin Diner stools and left it at that. The flop house up top is pretty much the same story. Some Vault 88 beds where there used to be like sleeping bags just chucked on the floor. So it is a little bit more comfortable of a flop house than Tony Savaldi may say. So maybe he changed his mind because we are a little bit more luxurious. But at the end of the day, it's nothing fancy by any standard. I did decide to throw in a couple of outhouses. Now there was an outhouse before, um, but it was on a second story shack. So no idea where the poop fell. So I decided to actually throw in some plumbed outhouses. So we do have these outhouse objects from the barn build set. And we do have a couple of these stainless steel vault style toilets. So the idea here is that these actually are plumbed in and they actually do go somewhere. And we do have this pair of sinks for people to wash their hands when they're all done. So even though it is an outhouse, it's still more sanitary than what was here before, which was just crapping in a bucket. So this shack has now been converted to our salon. So we do have a barber. She's right here. She's got a bench for people to wait for their haircuts. She's got some potted plants, a nice painting of a moose. And I mean, really, that's all there is to it. We do have our Brahmin pen for our good doctor slash veterinarian, Kate. So, ah, sorry, Moo Moo. So we do have our normal feeder for keeping the Brahmin close. We also have the um, non-Nuka World feeder, which is set up in front of a hand pump. So the idea is that this bathtub is for watering the Brahmin and this wood one is for feeding the Brahmin. So my usual setup there, I did keep the uh, Brahmin paddock. So this should be the same one that was in game. I don't think that I scrapped it and built a new one. It's been a while since I unlocked this site. I played around with it a little bit and completely destroyed it. Uh, so I'm not quite sure. Don't quite remember what was here when I arrived. So this is Kay's house. This is where she and her daughter Meg live. So we do have just some various different styles of lights. So I, just like with my Jamaica plane, I tried to make sure I wasn't sticking with any singular style of light. So just about everywhere you go, aside from the street lamps, are going to be different light sources as we go around the settlement. And then we have Kay's clinic. So we do have our good friend Kay. We do have some plants here and there. We have a nice red couch so it won't get blood stained as people wait for her services. And then we just have a chemistry station, a faux raptor, which is manned most of the time. And we do have this bookshelf. It came or it stayed here. I was going to populate it with a bunch of junk and then kind of decided against that aesthetic, even though having a bunch of junk laying around does fit this scrappy wastelander aesthetic. I really didn't want to have to take the time of going and finding a bunch of random junk items and throwing them in. So that is our complete circle of the settlement as we are back here at the main gate. And so now it's time. Ah. And so now it's time to take a look at the main gate. So.
And so now having completed our loop, it's time to take a look at the main memorial building. So we do have our neon lighting to show that this is the main market area. And we've kind of made this a central stopping post. So we do have our recruiting beacon. We do have our main generator, a vault Tech population management system, just in case. Um, I was trying to see if I could use this to assign the caravan workers, just those random generic NPCs who just wander around Bunker Hill. And unfortunately, you cannot. So I did throw in some Nuka World arcade equipment. So we do have a hoop shot with some basketballs. We have atomic rollers with some roller balls somewhere. Maybe you have to throw in a ticket to get them. And we do have Wakakami. So we have kind of a first or full service arcade, even though it doesn't have our normal Creation Club arcade cabinets. Because of how cramped the space is that we have to work with, I actually tried to avoid Creation Club content, and I think I did a fairly good job. I actually don't think I have any Creation Club content, minus maybe a couple posters here and there. And so we do have some Vault 88 slot machines. Just a couple tables for people to sit at. We also have these, which were here in game. I think I just threw a few chairs around them. And of course, we have Deb's sale clerk, sale clerk, her sales counter. And then we have these three counters for the various Bunker Hill caravans to sit at. Whether it's Trash Can Carla, Cricket, or any of the other vendors, they still come here and man one of these two counters. And Old Man Stockton, he always just kind of hangs out back behind this counter for some reason. So the main memorial hasn't changed too much in its general purpose. It's just a little bit busier as to what it does. And I did throw in some street lamps in here just because of how tall the roof was and it could accommodate it. So it is quite a bit better lit than it was before. And even though you can't get rid of them, we do have this nice big gate in order to lock this down if we need to. However, there is still this back entrance as well that you would have to protect, as well as this little catwalk out here. I was going to try and turn this into a shooting range, but it would be very short range shooting range. And I kind of decided against it last minute just because this honestly does not have much of a purpose. All right. And so most people who build at Bunker Hill will tell you that they actually build on the roof of the memorial just because all of this stuff really gets in the way of anything big or amazing. So the largest level build area that you actually have is on the roof of the memorial. So I actually built a nice stairwell leading up there. And so on the rooftop, we have three main features. So the first feature that we have is this soda fountain. So we already have Deb's shop downstairs. We already have kind of the restaurant bar area at Savaldi's. So rather than just building another bar, I decided to specifically make a soda fountain. So we have our soda machine. We have our Nuka-Cola mixer and some of these various drink dispensers. So we're not really encroaching on Savaldi's being a bar and restaurant. And so this is pretty sparsely populated um, for the most part. And we do use some of these park benches because there are some parks nearby. This would be something you could easily scrap from the Boston ruins. So it doesn't really break that aesthetic of being cobbled together shanty town type setup. So in here we have our rooftop greenhouse. I build them at almost all of my settlements. This one doesn't have the sprinkler system. So this one I just decided the sprinkler system seems a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technologically difficult to pull off. So I decided to just leave it as a greenhouse. They can figure out some sort of manual way to bring the water necessary for the plants to grow. and. So it does have a pretty diverse group of plants where before I think that they had potatoes and maybe a couple of corn plants that Kessler used to tend at the start of this. And so we still have corn. We just have a lot more of it. We still have potatoes and we have a lot of mute fruit added in. So this is kind of all the plants you need for your vegetable starch. So 
I think it's all the plants you need for vegetable starch anyway. So I think there is a specific reason why I chose those three plants. And of course, you're not just dealing with a single staple crop that's going to um, run into some sort of problem if there's ever a disease that affects one specific type of plant. All right. And so here is kind of our rooftop chapel. So I played around with a rooftop chapel at Hangman's Alley. Yes, I do build at Hangman's Alley, even though I have been very hesitant to post it on settlement builds for noobs. But I do, or I have tried this before. And so this one I think works a little better than the one I had at Hangman's Alley. But we do have these various park benches to serve as pews. And I used this random shelf. So they kind of just reused the circular file cabinet and just made it a shelf instead. And so this is an object available in the main game. So I kind of use this as a pulpit. And then back here, we have a baptismal even. So regardless of what faith you choose to go with, whether this is going to be um, Christian, whether it's going to be some sort of post-apocalyptic religion like the children of Adam, or whether you're going with an all faiths chapel like the one that they have at Diamond City, you have a chapel up here and it is kind of up here in the open. So you get to deal with rain and such. So that's really it. Bunker Hill is very difficult to build anything large and meaningful. I did have a two-story apartment complex up here to start. So you can build taller than what I have, but it does look a little out of place when you have a two-story concrete building built on top of a crumbling pre-war memorial. So it doesn't look quite right. All in all, I kind of feel like I failed you guys on this one. I tried to keep to the natural aesthetic that is here rather than throwing in my usual concrete or something that's even more out of place like vault Tech. However, I'm really outside of my element on this one. I really do not like the Wastelander scrappy aesthetic. I feel it's extremely out of place given the fact that this is supposed to be 200 years after the end of the Great War. However, I will reserve judgment for myself until I see what you all have to say in the comments below. Do you feel like I've done this settlement justice or do you feel like I kind of ruined it by scrapping everything first and then thinking later? All in all, this is my first attempt at building at Bunker Hill. This is the first playthrough I've actually had where I unlocked it as a settlement. So it's not one that I've had a lot of time to actually plan out and try and construct. At. Making the mistake of scrapping everything first like I normally do and then trying to construct over the top really broke a lot of the pre-existing structures here and did a lot to negatively impact what I could actually accomplish at this settlement. With that, I think I'm ready to wrap up. If you enjoyed this content, a like would really help the channel out. Share your thoughts in the comments below, stay safe, and I will see you all here next time at Grey Gaming.